Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before I get into it with our guest here today, well, first of all, you should recognize our guest if you're a longtime listener. We have Jeannie Feldman back on the podcast. I think we last had her on last October. And as we can tell right now, she's currently getting ready for a show. And she's here to, you know, give us an update. And yeah, just talk to us again. And we're really glad to have her on. Jeannie, thank you so much for coming back on. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm happy, happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, I got to ask this because I ask this every damn time. What is the weather like today in your neck of the woods? Hot and humid. It's about 90 something degrees. Um, it's been raining the past few days, so it's been pretty humid. Yeah. But it, I mean, yeah, it's, it's raining here currently right now up in Minnesota. Now it's like 70 degrees. Oh, woe is me. I don't want to depress everyone too much, but, uh, what have you been up to really since we last talked? I mean, it's been nine months and you know, I know now you're getting ready for a show, but what has your whole, you know, bodybuilding process been like over these last nine months? Well, I mean, it's been, kind of crazy. I have a lot of things going on. Um, the prep has been good. You know, I kind of, uh, decided this time to, um, not to jump into too many shows and just to hold back a little bit and, you know, work on some weaknesses that I have and, you know, improve on, 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 you know, certain things that I needed to, to take the time to improve a little bit more. Um, so it's been actually really great cause it's been, um, smooth sailing i took uh, a longer prep so i'm taking my time and it's not like rush rush you know into getting ready so i'm actually really enjoying this prep along with the longer prep have you mixed things up with your nutrition as well because obviously if you're going to a longer prep you might be able to hang on to those extra calories a little bit longer too yeah i mean i started i mean before that i would do probably i mean like a 12 week prep sometimes 10, which is kind of like crunching everything, you know, all into, you know, a short period of time. Whereas here I took 18 weeks and I kind of eased into the diet, you know, and just took my time and, and it seemed to work a lot better for me. My body's responding so much better. Oh yeah. And obviously we can tell them what's one body part you think that over this last prep has, has improved the most from when we last talked. My legs my glutes, my hamstrings, uh, my quads, which I really, you know, that that's my weakness. So um, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm taking the time and just, you know, isolating them and trying to, trying to, you know, do work on heavy, you know, compound lifts. And uh, I think it's really, I think you guys will see when I step on stage, but I think it's made a difference. Oh, I mean, just looking at some of her Instagram photos, I can totally tell. Yeah, it's it's definitely made a difference. And, you know, lucky you that you're finally able to improve your legs while I'm stuck here just in the pit of misery of just <laughs> never ending pain and struggle. I mean, from the last time I talked to you, I might have gained a tenth of a centimeter in my legs. Are gone. So, I mean, hey, oh my God. hey, a, a gain, a gain is a gain. But, you know, hey, I'm just one right. of those miserable, pitiful fools that I'm just always blessed with, you know, just that type of stuff. But. On top of all this, I mean, has your mentality changed at all with this longer prep when it comes to, you know, just the process of everything? Yeah, it definitely has. Um, I feel like like a lot. I'm a lot more relaxed, and um, I'm just I'm learning my body much more. I'm taking the time to really feel um, and understand my body, whereas before that, you know, I I didn't really pay attention too much. And I'm just learning a lot more about myself, this, this prep. And I, I, I guess, you know, every prep, you're going to learn something about yourself, you know, but um, uh, taking longer time and just letting things happen the way they're supposed to, the pieces just fall into place, you know, and taking the time and just really, you know, seeing and, 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 and paying attention to my body, I think. And I, I, it's just, it's a lot more relaxing. Um, you know, I'm enjoying the prep a lot more. It's not so tedious and it's not so stressful, you know. And now, honestly, do you even train back at all anymore? Because, I mean, your back has gotten even bigger than it was the last time. But do you even train <laughs> it anymore? Because I know that that's your number one area. Like, are you just, do you just not even touch it, really? Oh, I do. I do. I mean, what I'm working on, basically, on my back, not so much the width, but the density on the, on the center of my back and my lower back. So uh, I'm concentrating more on the density of my lower back and the, the middle of my back. But yes, I always, I do. I cannot. 
there's a video on her on Instagram doing pull-ups and like literally you could use that as an, an, an anatomy chart for like anyone that's <laughs> saying that you could just have a professor right there and he'd have like a little pointer and like pointer things. This is that muscle and that's that. I mean, it is just, yeah, it is just absolutely insane. That's definitely her, her strong point. But with this, I mean, with, with COVID and everything still, you know, it's, it's been dying down and everything has, has that impacted your training at all? Or has it been that you've just gotten used to it where it hasn't, it's really just been on the back of your mind? I mean, um, in Florida, I mean, we've been pretty fortunate. I mean, we didn't, nothing's really closed down. We closed down for a short period of time, but um, I own my own gym. So I never, you know, thank God I've been um, blessed. So that it never really affected me like that. So that's, yeah, that is great. And plus, yeah, that's, that's one of the benefits of living in Florida, I guess. I mean, our governor is just about to give up his emergency powers in August, he said, because apparently that's, that don't even get me started on that whole thing. That's like, that's going to be a 10 hour podcast on that. You know, that's one of the perks of living in Minnesota, I guess. But, um, yeah, on, I mean, on top of, you know, the, just this new prep and everything, have you worked on a new posing routine at all? Or have you just sort of just been sort of just getting the basics done? I've been working on a new posing routine. I've been working on, um, uh, getting better at my posing because that is also something that's um, I I want I want to say was kind of my weakness. I mean, my back double bicep, I had to change the positioning of my legs because a lot of times I I you know I I couldn't feel when I was hitting my hamstrings. So I'm really like focusing on positioning my legs the right way and you know squeezing the glutes and you know bending the back. But um, yeah, we're always working on posing. I mean, that never ends. You know. And routine, yeah, something a little different, maybe something a little more interesting, you know, because now, I don't know if you noticed, but these girls are getting crazy with this posing, with women's physique and women's bodybuilding, but it's getting really, I mean, they're they're really paying attention a lot more to, to the routines now. And I think it has a lot to do with the points as well, you know, so it's like bringing the whole package, you know. Absolutely. And with posing, one thing that I've never really asked anyone is that like when you do have a back that's like your dominant muscle, do you find it hard at all? Like when you're doing a back double by to not just have that be the, you know, just take over everything? Because the thing with posing is that everything just has to be sort of symmetrical and natural. Have you found that to be a struggle when you have that one body part that's just so dominant? Well, the thing is, when you have your back that's so dominant and then your legs are lacking, the first thing they're going to see is that your legs are lacking that's the problem. So that's why I, I, um, took more time this season to, to really work on, on my lower, on my, on my legs so that that way I'm more symmetrical. But I mean, as far as when I'm doing the back double, I mean, I'm doing that pose. I mean, I can relax the upper back because it's already developed. So I kind of focus more on hitting, you know, the lower part. No, and that's, again, that's the whole mind and muscle connection too, that that's just, that's a whole different conundrum. And when you're hitting that lower part, how do you do that? Because I'm one of those people where I see some of the things that people are able to do with their posing. And I'm like, how are they able to do it? And like, I can do like, like tension and stuff like that, but it just takes a specific set of skills. And how have you been able to develop that? I mean, um, it's like you said, it's mind to muscle. It's just like when you're working out and you're paying attention to like, you know, squeezing that muscle. It's the same thing when you're doing your posing. It's actually a little, it's harder you know, but, um, it just really like focusing and try and feel like, it's so hard to feel your hamstring. Like some people can, but for me, it's like, I struggle with feeling, you know, the hamstring and positioning the leg so that I can feel it and give that squeeze so that the hamstring shows. But, um, yeah, it, it's definitely mind to muscle condition, just taking the time and just positioning everybody's body is different so you have to position your foot so where you know you it it it's in the right place so that it shows you know everything the right way so i'm the exact opposite of you where i can feel everything in my legs and calves but they have zero size at all so that's the that's the problem then it's the exact opposite where that's you know that's why i love asking questions like that because everyone's different and it makes still makes me feel bad about myself every single damn time that i ask that But yeah, and I mean, on top of, you know, all this stuff that's been going on and, you know, just with this new prep and everything, have you found that you've gotten better on your lifts or are you just now in that, I mean, obviously now you're in that, you're, you're in that cutting stage now as you're getting ready for a show, but did you find that your lifts overall got better over this last off season? Yes, definitely. Um, it's, it's the same thing, like, you know, getting to know your body and everything, just feeling everything and taking the time, working out smarter is what I like to call it, you know, I mean, just taking, uh, slowing the reps down, feeling everything. Now I'm able to feel each muscle more 
So yeah, definitely. I mean, it's gotten m- much better. What's you know, your? Every, every, I'm sorry. Oh no, I was gonna say, what's your relationship with cardio been like during this last prep? I never liked cardio. <laughs> I'm not a fan, but listen, I gotta do it. But I don't, I don't overdo it because, um, I'm sure you heard this before. You know, trying to overdoing the cardio, especially me with my legs. If I overdo it, then I lose the muscle on my legs. So I do about 45 minutes a day. That's it. No more than that. So I had gotten into an argument with a friend of mine and it it was really, really bad. This was about like three weeks ago. So I stormed off. It was like 10 o'clock and I said, I'm going to go for a walk. I go for walks all the time. I came back to the house four and a half hours later at doing after I did 17 miles of walking. So yeah, I don't, I don't recommend that for everyone. And plus my shoes were not really meant for walking. So my feet are still recovering as we speak right now. You know, it was one of those things where I even had to take them off and use my socks for like the last mile of it, just because they were just so puffed up or yeah, it was, it was a bad. So everyone make sure if you're going to do something like that, that you at least have the proper equipment for that. So definitely. Yeah. Especially shoes. Oh my God. Yeah. With my, I mean, yeah, I have, I got one pair of shoes now that actually work better but also everyone a little hack there if you double socket i found that that prevents most of my blistering when it comes to that so i do that i do that now and then one of my one person that i know is just like yeah put like baby powder or not baby powder it's like baby something put on like baby's butts or whatever it's like starts with a d i forgot what it's called but she said yeah put that on your feet and it oh yeah. desitin that's what it is yeah that's what it is yeah they said put that on because they ran marathons and they're like yeah you never get one so again everyone i'm just learning things left and right here from from every, yeah, it is really good stuff to know. But has your sleep, do you think, been better now that you've taken a longer prep as opposed to the shorter ones where you're going to, you know, tone down a lot quicker? I never have issues sleeping. I'll nap during the day after my workouts and I go to sleep at night. I've, I've never had any issues sleeping. I, I probably sleep a little bit more now. I do. I love my sleep. <laughs> and that's, you know, it's so important. It's recovery. That's when you do all your recovery. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that is definitely, definitely the most important thing. And I mean, just with all, like you said, with this sport constantly evolving and changing, does, how do you do with that mentally too, knowing that like every year they're going to get bigger and better and that there's, it's always evolving. And that just, for me, that's like my, my competitive side too, where I get nervous too. Sometimes when I was pitching before, I was like, oh, I don't know how good this other pitcher is going to be. It's just always that uncertainty, but how do you deal with that mentally? Because I can imagine, especially when you're on your own doing cardio, working out and you're in your own mind space, that can be something that if you let it, it can really just tear your mind apart. It really can. And looking on social media and comparing and stuff like that can, can, that's something that I avoid. I try not to look at anybody. I focus on myself on, and on the improvements that I've made. And, um, you know, just, I, I just focus, focus on myself and, you know, just try not to think about things like that. You know, there's some things that you can have control over and some things you can't, you know, you can control how, what, how you, um, how you show up the next show. And if, you know, you give your hundred percent at each workout, if you do your diet right, that I can control, but I I can't control who's going to show up, but as everybody's getting better, I'm getting better as well. So. Well, and the thing with physique, though, too, is that, like you said, it is getting bigger and harder, you know, every year and it's getting closer to bodybuilding. Where do you think the future of physique is going? Because some people, I mean, we get mixed answers on that. But you personally, like if someone were to ask you where physique would be in the next couple of years, where do you think it's going? I mean, where I hope for it to be is um, maybe a little a little softer, meaning, uh, you know, not so much. There's a lot of girls that are, so, it's so, it's very fine line. There's so many girls in physique that should be in bodybuilding, but I mean, um, maybe, maybe smaller, but you know, I, I do like having the striations and coming in nice and hard, but you know, not as hard as bodybuilding and just having that, you know, nice taper shape and, you know, a little, a little softer, a little more feminine, I guess. I don't know. But that's what I would like to see. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it's I'd like to see more. um, I don't know, because it's it's, like you said, it's such a small difference between bodybuilding and I mean, the women bodybuilders, of course, they're bigger women, you know, but um, maybe a little softer, a little maybe smaller in size, not so big, just, you know a good in between figure and women's bodybuilding, you know, that difference has gotten so small over the last few years. It it has. It's 
it's hard. I mean, let's be honest. Like you would be competing in bodybuilding 10 years ago if you came into the, with your package that you yes. have right now. Yes. I mean, it's right. just, yeah, it's, it's just the amount that it's changed has just been so drastic and so quickly that a lot of people are struggling with that. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, some people think it's just going to get to a point where it does become, it does get way too big for physique and then they have to slow it down a little bit. I think it might be something like that where it just peaks and then everyone's like, okay, yeah, we need it. We need to definitely tone down, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I do love coming in. Like, I love having striations on the glutes or on the quads. I mean, I think that's great. But I remember when I first started, too, I was told by the judges, make sure you don't have striations on your quads or on your glutes, you know. And um, now every single woman that does women's physique, almost all of them come in with striated everything, you know. So it's hard because I do like that. But at the same time, you know, it, 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 it's very close to body, women's bodybuilding. With the with the striations, are you one of those pr- people that it it comes in very easily during your prep, or is it one of those cases too where like at the very last minute you see veins? Because we have a multitude of answers on that. Um, certain parts of my body, um, for example, my shoulders, my chest, um, and my glutes do come in easy. My legs, my quads, I don't have striations on them yet. We'll see this season if they come out. But yeah, my legs are the last, you know, my quads are the last to. Never had a vein in my, never had a vein in my life. Never. No matter what. (laughs) Never. I just, I, I I don't know what the problem is. Never say never. (laughs) But I don't even know what the problem, even when I was at my leanest and my most in shape, never a vein. Like you could see them like underneath a lot of skin, but like they were never pronounced. They were never, I mean, yeah, I'm just, I guess that's just, that's just how it goes for some people because. it's hereditary too, because I mean, even as a kid, I was always very vascular. You know, my dad's very vascular. So I think that's, that has to do, you know, I think it's hereditary as well. And of course, being like so, so lean, you know, you have to be like, what, 8% body fat or I don't know, something crazy, unless you're going on stage. Yeah. Well, how do you deal with this heat too, being at such a low body fat too? I mean, it's like, I would not ever even want to walk outside. It drives me crazy. I try not to go outside as much as possible. (laughs) And you feel it so much more and you're a lot more miserable, especially when it's humid. You know, it's not just dry heat. It's just sticky, hot. I mean, yeah, I'm not one of those people that go to the beach all the time. I know it's crazy. I live in Florida and everything, but I'm not. I don't like the heat that much. Do you find that it's hard when it comes to your water intake, especially living in such a warm climate where you are going to be drinking more water and then you have to have enough water for bodybuilding, too? But sometimes I could imagine that sometimes you might accidentally like over drink just because of all how hot it is. I'm so bad at drinking water. It's not even funny. I mean, people like drink gallons, two gallons. I'm like, I force myself to drink water. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I, I, it's, I have a hard time with water. That's one of my, my things that I, have a, I struggle with. But I sit there and I have this cup that measure like every hour how much I'm supposed to drink. And I, I, and I force myself to drink. Well, here's one thing that I have that I got from Target. It was only like 20 bucks where it's a backpack that fills up to be a gallon. So then when I go on my walks, I use it. And then as you drink it, obviously it's less and less. So it becomes easier to walk with it on your back and it's just connected. And you just have a tube that you can just bring out and then just sip on it. And yeah, it's worked for me where, you know, if I'm going on like an hour, an hour and a half, just a simple walk or whatever, I'll, I'll drink half of it during the walk. And yeah, it gets easier to carry it then as the, as you start drinking more of it. So that's even more motivation to drink it. So I don't know, huh. maybe I can, I I can send that. a link to that. Yeah. Well, a guy at work just started. It, uh, came in with it when I was at UPS and I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. So then I looked it up and I was like, oh yeah, Target just sells those. So I went and bought it and yeah, it's it's definitely worked out for me. But yeah, that, well, I mean, it got to a hundred degrees a couple of days for like the last like three weeks. And yeah, that's, those are the times where I can't even walk out until it's like nine o'clock at night because that's just, I'd help move, I'd help move a friend on one of those days. And that was one of the worst days of my life at a hundred degrees. That was just, oh, that was. Is it, is it humid over there or is it? No, it's, it's a little bit, but like, it's, I don't know. Like we've been in the nineties solidly almost every day for like the last month. It's been like unseasonably warm, but now it's back down in like the seventies because of the rain. But like, the funny thing is, is that I live two and a half hours away from Duluth. And if you know, that's where Lake Superior is. And it's funny whenever it's like nine, whenever it's like 95 or a hundred degrees here, it's 60 degrees there because of the wind, because of the wind effect from coming off the lake. So they have the best summers ever, but don't ever go there during the winter. Cause it's going to be negative 30 degrees for like, Oh gosh. Yeah. So, but they have the best summers and I was so jealous. That's why most of my friends that went to school up there, they would stay there over the summer. Cause they're like, I don't, it's perfect weather up here all year round in the summer at least. But yeah, it's always, it's always interesting how just with the wind effect, you know, you can be like 30 degrees less than everyone else, but I've just been fascinated by that. But on top of, you know, just this, just this whole sport i mean what like when it comes to just your overall life how have you been during these last nine months because you know a lot of people don't like to admit it but 
overall life impacts your mentality way more than almost anything else when it comes to preps? Um, this past nine months, I mean, um, I don't know, basically in the beginning, I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do for the season and, um, you know, I, I, nothing really changes. It's just I, my, my day from day to day is, you know, waking up, eating my meals, going to the gym from 12 to 1230 to 330, including my cardio, I'm at the gym. It's just, it's basic, it's routine. I mean, nothing really changes for me, you know, whether it be off season or on season, the only thing that really changes for me is the diet, you know, but, you know, and, but it pretty much, it stays the same. So how many weeks out are you? Um, I'm five weeks out. I'm, five I'll weeks be out. competing in the Tampa Pro. Tampa Pro. Okay, yeah. I know we have a lot of Omaha Pro people, but I, I'm going there this weekend to go and visit my grandma and grandpa for 4th of July, and then I'm leaving literally like two days before the show starts. So I was like, oh, damn, I could have I, I should have stayed. But, yeah, that's the Tampa Pro. That's awesome. And So what is your uh, – so do you change anything at all these last five weeks when it comes to your diet or your um, cardio, or is it just you just sort of slowly just stay the same pace? Or where what do you – like to do in your last few weeks of your prep usually well the last few weeks basically it, it, what it is is trying to just maintain the muscle and you know just try and stay lean and get leaner and leaner but at the same time maintain the muscle so my food intake is the same i i don't really um i kind of I, I maintain it the same i you know a lot of carbs a lot of good carbs and then you know here and there i'll throw in you know a little bit of a depletion just to get off a little bit more of that extra deep fat um, but it, it stays the same. It's just basically right now is leaning out, but holding on to the muscle. So no, no drastic changes right now. You know, one thing that I didn't ask you the last time that I made sure that I wrote down for this time is that, you know, this is a sport where it's one of those rare sports where everyone really supports each other. And a lot of the compares, I mean, you have each other's back. I see all the positive stuff that you guys send each other on Instagram and everyone just seems to really genuinely care for each other. How important is that for you? Because I know coming from a sport where, you know, baseball not everyone really supports each other i mean it's it's and it's different for men too like men in bodybuilding i find that they're a little bit more com like aggressive when it comes to that but what is that like for you to have that support and know that like everyone generally has your back and they're looking for you know the best in you? i mean it's amazing i've made so many good friends that i stay in touch with i mean from the beginning from when i first started competing i mean i've heard things about um other divisions that maybe um you know they're not as supportive but I want to say that as far as women's physique, every single competitor, I have never come across one of them that, you know, that rubbed me the wrong way or that wasn't supportive. Or, I mean, uh, when they know that you're prepping for a show, they'll send you messages and I'll do the same for, for you know, for my friends or for, you know, competitors. But it's, it, you know, you really form a bond because we, we appreciate the hard work that goes into you know, the prep, the sport, you know, the, the passion that we share for, for the sport. So it's like, you know, we, we want to see all of us do well. We all, you know, I want to see everybody go and be on the Olympia stage, you know. But, I mean, I I love the sport because of that, too. You know, I love uh, competing, but I also love the friendships that I that I make and the bonds that I make with the, with the competitors. Yeah, that's one thing that a lot of people who, you know, just are – slightly into the sport don't really understand but being that you own your own gym and your own business has has business for your gym gotten back to what it was maybe pre-pandemic or is it still you know a little bit behind where are you at currently with that with people in memberships and stuff because i mean the gyms up here or i mean it's a half and half thing where half are not even like close to where they're at and half are somewhat there but i don't think any gym's right back to where it is here just because of our stupid rules but down there in florida do you think that you know with your gym specifically has it gotten back to sort of like pre-pandemic where it was oh yeah Definitely. If if not, maybe a little busier too. Yeah. Well, my gym, basically it's a small gym, you know, we have our trainers and it's all one-on-one. -on -one, so it's not really like a walk-in type of gym um, where we, you know, usually people come in and they have their trainer that they work with and everything. So it's very, um, and it's like people's second home. I like them, you know, to feel like they're at home and everybody knows everybody, but we've gotten actually busier because now with the, the vaccine and everything, people feel more comfortable. So, so I think business has picked up because of it. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm great. That's great to hear that it's gotten better down there. And yeah, that's just, I mean, yeah, I wish, I wish I could say the same up here, but you know, who knows, maybe the next time we talk, things will finally be close to where they are, but don't, don't even get me started on that. But when it comes to just these last, you know, few weeks as well too, with, you know, 
the one thing that I found so baffling about like the athletic mindset is that like for me right before I was supposed to pitch an important game I got the flu the day before and so I couldn't do that so I mean there's anything that could come I mean like we had Stephanie Flesher on a couple of days ago and she got food poisoning and stuff I'm a, I'm a busy bot I mean I sometimes worry a little bit too much about stuff but how do you deal with a, like especially you know it could be just one thing that happens. Do you even think about that at all? Or is, and I don't mean to put that on your mind. Cause I had one guess was like, Oh, now I'm thinking about it all the time. Now that you got it on me. <laughs> nah, but it's okay. Is that anything that like you ever worry about? Because for me, that was one thing where like, yeah, I, nothing could ever be too perfect for me. And that was a problem. Yeah. I mean, I don't think about it, but it has happened to me actually not this Olympia, but the one before I got, I got really sick. I had the flu and I was sick for, and I was during, you know, and I felt horrible. And on top of it, my sh- I had locked shoulders, so my shoulder froze. So the posing and everything, I, and I just felt horrible. But yeah, I mean, I try not to think about it. But if it does happen, you know, if my body needs the rest, I take the rest. I take my vitamin C, and I just, you know, if you keep on working out while feeling sick, then that's probably the worst thing that you can do. You just gotta really, actually, take some couple days off, and just rest you know, it happens, you know, you got to just be prepared for it and just, you know, keep on when you do feel good, then maybe, you know, go back to the gym, but make sure you rest. And that's why in the last 10 years, I've not gone back to an Applebee's once because I know that that was the place that I got it from. It must have been chicken fingers or something like that because I had them the night before and then the very next morning, oh, I was dead for about a week where like I could barely even, I was literally sitting in my bed right back here, laying in my bed. Literally, I couldn't even move because if I moved, I thought I was going to throw up. So I literally was just, I couldn't even move. I had to like have my mom come in and be like, can you just get me some water and just pour it in my mouth because I don't even want to, like if I leaned over to the side too much, my stomach would just, oh, it was it I know was, the feeling. It was uh, that's happened to me before, I mean, years before. ago. But Chinese food, and I won't Ooh. touch it today. Yeah, yeah. yeah it absolutely. scares me. Oh, so wait, so you don't even have any rice now in your in your uh, in your nutrition? Oh, I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's. I mean, I that's, do. That's yeah. that's but the I, ultimate. You know, the, yeah. the thing is that I eat everything now. When I'm prepping, I eat at home, so I can't yeah. get food poisoning. Yeah, that's true. Well, I make sure uh, I accidentally undercooked some chicken like two years ago, and I also got sick on that. So now I basically burn. I basically burn the chicken now. So I I make sure yeah. that there's no bacteria in there a- at all. So yeah, that that definitely you know, <laughs> yeah that that works as well. But I mean, we talked about this last time too. But it's just so important to bring up again is that you know, like you're not gonna maintain this look that you have right now for as long as you know people imagine that you do because people just assume that bodybuilders are in shape you know almost all the time. They don't assume that you know you have your your off season look, but. Um, do you think that this has gotten easier for you mentally just in these last over this last year? Because with all the stuff that we've had to deal with, I think that the simple things like an off season body would be a little bit easier for people to grasp knowing that like, if we can get through all the pan, all the panic and all the craziness that was this last year, I think everything in life might seem a little easier for some people. I mean, as far as uh, it's, it's been definitely easier. I mean, I, I you know, more time that goes by and the more preps that I do or the more off season, every, you know, it just becomes a little more routine. So you know what to expect mentally, you know, uh, some people freak out when they have that off season body, but I mean, I know that I stay within maybe 10 to 15 pounds from, from stage weight. I don't like to gain too much and, you know, I'll enjoy, I'll eat good throughout the week and then I'll enjoy whatever I want to enjoy if it's here or there or on the weekends, you know? But I, I, that's the way I've always been to main, been able to maintain it throughout my off season. But it definitely does get easier, you know, uh, dieting for a show, prepping, you know, it, it gets easier, you know, mentally. You, you just know what to expect, you know. And then, you know, you, yeah, sometimes I go to the store and I'll look at chocolate and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, I, w- I wish I could have it. Or yeah, I'll just have a little piece of something, you know. But it, it does get easier, definitely. Well, and the one, the one area that, you know, I always love to ask our guests who have really nice shoulders is because that's the one problem for women that really struggle with the most. So what does a shoulder workout look like for you? Because if I didn't ask that, I would get killed in the comments down below saying, Ryan, you didn't ask her about her shoulders. I'm trying to get good shoulders over here. And so it it happens to me almost every time. Oh, well, I like to um, definitely do, um, well, side raises pretty heavy. I do um, bent over uh, rear delts um, with dumbbells. I do a lot. I can like we just say, can well. we just say trap city, everyone too? I mean, it's just not even ridiculous. I mean, just even, even, <laughs> at, even at steady state, it's just absolutely insane. I just can't. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, yeah. And you know, presses, you know, with, uh, I'll do it either on the Smith machine behind the neck or, and then on the front and then, um, 
you know, dumbbell presses, incline, flat, you know, oh, that's chest, sorry. Um, what else do I do for shoulders? I mean, I, I'll do for I'll do maybe three to four exercises and, you know, three sets of each thing, you know, but um, I always try and do heavy, as heavy as I can. Well, and, and my advice I bring out there too, it's like, you got to do it more than once a week if you really want to see results for a lot of people that are really struggling with it too, because that's the problem where they only train it once a week. And it's like, yeah, you know, that that's just my personal thing. But traps, was that something that you always had? Because that's that that along with calves for me are probably like the two most genetic things that I think. I guess so. I mean, um, they say that, you know, if you're, if you're genetically, you have it, obviously they're going to pop out even what, no matter what you do, they're going to pop out with whatever exercise they're going to stand out. But, um, I don't, I have to look back when I was thin, but I mean, I developed these doing CrossFit is what it was. I think doing a lot of shrugging, you know, but I don't really work out. I don't work out my traps. But then again, you know, when you work out shoulders, you, you know, complimentary you muscle. Out. Yeah. So yeah, you really, yeah. right. Yeah. But I do, when I do my shoulder workouts, I do, you know, obviously focus on each part of the shoulders, the back, the front, the side, you know, whereas a lot, I know a lot of people always focus on the front, you know, I, I go to the, at the gym and then you see people like just focusing on front raises and, you know, they don't really realize that they have to work all parts of the <sighs> shoulder. I've seen so many times, oh, I'm going to do a shoulder workout. Just this the whole time. Right. Just that the whole time. And it's like, well, what part of the shoulder are you working? And then they're like, oh, the, the shoulder part. And I'm like, well, no, there's there's three parts to it. But, you know, hey, I'll exactly. let you do it. Yeah. Three heads to the <laughs> yeah. Almost every time. Or, yeah, shoulder workout. And that's all that they do for, like, five sets. And they're like, oh, yeah, shoulder workout's done. Now I'm going to go train arms or I'm going to go train legs. And it's like, okay, whatever. I'm going to let you do your thing. But, you know, hey, if you wanted if you wanted, if you want advice, just, just ask me for it. But. Yeah, I mean, I've just found, and when it comes to, you know, just the sport and bodybuilding in particular, I, I didn't ask you this the last time either, and that was another one that I wrote down, is that, you know, what is one myth that you think you get the most from people when it comes to bodybuilding? Because unfortunately, there's just so many myths because the general public isn't as informed, I really think, as 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 they are with a lot of other sports, in part because it doesn't get really the publicity where, like, I always told people, it's like, I don't get why it's not on ESPN like it used to be. I mean, that's just why it's not even doing, I mean, with that, but what is one one of the biggest misconceptions that you think you get a lot from people when you mention that you're a bodybuilder? Well, I mean, people get intimidated by me, you know, just because I look a certain way doesn't mean that I am aggressive in any way, you know, I'm actually not. I mean, but um, that's the only thing that I, you know, that I think, you know, that I really uh, felt that, you know, it's been like a misconception as far as, you know, how people judge you just because you look a certain way doesn't mean, you know, that I am going to kick somebody's butt or something like that, you know. That's the only thing, really, to tell you the truth. But what and what's it like with the reactions that you're getting right now as you're specifically in this, you know, like lean as you're so close to a show? I mean, you cannot walk out in public without getting people's attention. Uh, I mean, generally, it's very positive. People will come up and they want to touch my arms, <laughs> which is funny. But, um, uh, you know, I get a lot of nice comments, you know, and people are like, wow, the dedication, you know, you're so dedicated, you know, but. I don't look at it as, I, I guess I don't look at it as hard work because I love it and enjoy it so much. You know, it doesn't seem like it's hard for me. It just seems like it just flows because I, I feel like I, I'm, I'm where I need to be. I just love working out. I love the whole process of prepping and the diet, you know, you know, of course, sometimes the diet gets tough, but I just love the whole process of, of, you know, bodybuilding. Some people don't like to compete and they just want you know, the body, but I love the whole you know, um, prepping for a show and just seeing the changes in your body as you get closer to a show. Well, with me also, I need 10 layers of tan, so I'm not going to spend that much money too, because, you know, I just got that <laughs> pure Norwegian white where it's just, yeah, it, 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 it is not, it is not going to work. But that mentality that gets you through a prep, I compare it to, you know, very few things really top that when it comes to just the mindset that you have to have in the, in the control and just how it really develops you into a stronger person. How have you used that mindset that prepping and being a Bible is giving you and use it to impact your life in other ways? Because that is one thing that you carry from that gym and just knowing like, Hey, if I can get through a prep, I can do anything in life. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. It's made me a stronger person, uh, for everything. And, um, you know, also being a lot more organized and, 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 you know, um, efficient and, you know, everything that I do, it has a plan. I plan everything out because of it because bodybuilding, you have to be, 
very organized with your life. Everything's on schedule. Uh, so, you know, when you wake up, when you sleep, when you eat, you know, when you train. So I think it's made me uh, very, uh, very organized, very, um, you know, I guess when I say that I'm going to do something, I make sure I follow through with it. And, you know, whereas before that, I wouldn't, you know, I'll be like, ah, whatever, I make up excuses. But now it's like, I, I follow through with everything. You know, if I say that I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. But, um, and I, I apply that to everything in my life now. And, and I think it's helped me so much, you know, as far as, you know, and, you know, teaching other people to be, to do the same and maybe looking at it at a, at a different way, the way that I look at it, maybe they can understand it too, and maybe learn from it as well. But, um, it has helped me so much. Just with the way that bodybuilding is also constantly evolving to one of the last few questions, if you could change one thing about the sport, I always ask this, but then I'm going to add, and if there's one thing about the sport that you think is underrepresented that should be brought up, what is one thing that you think really needs to, you know, get more attention? And what is one thing that you think really needs to change? Well, I think that, you know, they really need to recognize this as, as a sport more so like, you know, how they do, uh, um, you know, the NFL or, you know, or, uh, the NBA or, you know, just recognize it more as a sport, whereas, you know, and, and now of course they're, do, you know, they're televising it a little bit more, but it, you know, on pay-per-view or whatever, stuff like that. But I mean, because of the whole steroid thing, I guess maybe that has to do with it. They, they don't want to put it out. Well, you're, like, well you just well, mentioned the NFL. <laughs> well, that's right. but to them, you know, it's a you know, baseball. Sport, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but for us, it's kind yeah. of in the open, you know, yeah. okay, obviously you're a bodybuilder. Yeah. So, you know, that comes along with mm -hmm. the sport. So, but I'd like to see it a little bit, you know, people to recognize it more as a sport because there's so much that goes into it. And it's so interesting and people want to know, and it's so fascinating, you know, what goes into the whole, you know, from the beginning all the way to, you know, get uh, qualifying for the Olympia to the, you know, to the Olympia, you know, that's what I would like to see more, more recognition for the sport. I'm just going to break everyone's mind here right now. Even in the NFL, there are kickers that are on steroids, okay? That that just gets your mind, okay? Punters are probably the one position where you're like, okay, there's a good chance that they're not. Punters and kickers, right. but even then, there are some that are where I'm just like, okay, and everyone, yeah, everyone's favorite athlete from now, from this age, they're on something. I mean, let's, it's just, that's just how, that's just how sport is. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Unless you're Ken Griffey Jr., which is why he's my favorite baseball player of all time. He's the only one in that era that didn't get accused of anything, but yeah, he's, yeah, that's, that's something. I mean, but for me, for me in bodybuilding, it's like, yeah, absolutely. It's a part of the sport and you have to, you have to do it. And it's like, it's no, but it, I never ask about it because it's none of my business. I don't care about it. And it's just like, you still have to put the work in because there's so many myths about where they think, you know, oh, as soon as you take something, the next morning you're going to wake up and you're just going to be, yeah, fee, fi, fo, fum. It's like, not at all. If you don't put in the work in the gym. If you don't do the diet, that, that is just like the icing on the cake that kind of brings everything, you know, together. But, but it's it's a very small percentage of everything else that goes into bodybuilding. You know, if you, you can do all the steroids in the world, but if you're not doing the work in the gym or you're not doing the diet, what good is it going to do? And you I know? know, and I know some people that do exactly that. And then they wonder why they get the results. And it's like, dude, you just work out once a week really. And you should be fine. And you should at least see some results, but like, no, they just think if they take something that, and I've seen that so many times, especially not in college all. too, where you had all these frat boys that are just like, yeah, yeah. You, but yeah, don't even don't even get me started on that because that's, you know, but yeah, it's just, yeah, with all the things that, you know, go into the sport, but if we were to talk to you again, which we, I mean, obviously we are going to talk to you again, probably like nine months to a year from now, where would you like to be at just in your overall, you know, bodybuilding career? Where would you like to be at just in your, your life? What are some goals that you'd like to have achieved? Well, um, I definitely, hopefully, you know, maybe in Tampa, I'll qualify for the Olympia and I'm um, looking to, to either be top 10 or better in the Olympia. That's my goal for the year. Hopefully better than top 10. <laughs> um, that's what I really, really am hoping for. Um, uh, life itself, you know, just growing my business and, you know, um, helping uh, everybody that, you know, that is interested in maybe as far as health wise, you know, getting to learn how to uh, uh, nutrition, how to eat better, how to work out properly. You know, um, I love teaching people whatever I, you know, learn from bodybuilding. Um, so just growing my business and just, you know, um, as far as that and, you know, Olympia, of course, you know, my goals and um, basically that's it. I mean, you know, my family, my, you know, you know, that's it. 
how have they been dealing with you on on prep? Because let's be honest, you don't you don't become the most tolerable person of all time when you're on prep. <laughs> <laughs> I have my days. Yeah. I do have my days. You have your days where you're just like, okay, moms, you know, just stay in your room, basically, don't leave until you know she's out. <laughs> Exactly. You know, I tell, I lock myself in my room and I watch Netflix and I'm like, today's one of those days that I need to be left alone. I get quiet. I don't get nasty. I just get um, quiet. Like I want to be left alone, you know, but they deal with it so well. They're, they're so patient. My husband's amazing. Um, they, you know, they've, they've been through it. What, what has it been? Five years now. So they're used to it. Do you have any shows that you recommend to binge watch? For them to what for 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 this the audience? Do you have any shows that like you found that are just like oh these are shows that people should watch that they haven't seen? Because I have a couple, but do you have any? As far as what Netflix? Yeah, Netflix. Yeah, like when you're having your that yeah. Like, oh my gosh, you're gonna laugh, but the ones that I watch are the baking channels. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, just, that is I a know, thing that's happened it, so much I, and i do not understand that why because for me that's just like torture i mean i know you can't eat it but i would never but i i love those too those halloween cooking especially when it gets to like yes, halloween and they do those competitions I, I could watch that all day every day and you know it's it's bad for me because then i literally just want to go out there and get a cake you know the the very you know next i know time, but yeah those are i don't know why things. but it's just when i'm on prep i just like to watch baking channel uh, ba- baking shows and cooking shows i i bake and I that's I love to bake and I, I cook meals for people as well. That's another business that I have. But I make like healthy bakes, you know, um, uh, healthy muffins made out of proteins and stuff like that. But um, I just get ideas from it, you know, and even though I'm on prep, I love I still love baking. So how are you able to force yourself mentally to not just eat? Because like when you're a chef, you got to taste the you got to taste the, the stuff a little bit every once in a while. You got to do that. But how do you force yourself not to like just dig into everything? Because I'm one of those people where I lack that willpower, which is one of the reasons why I never got into bodybuilding to begin with. I just got into, you know, getting in shape because I knew that the moment that I saw a Twix or a slice of pizza and even if I was leaning down, I'm just like, you know what? It's worth it for me to eat this thing, really. That's that, but that's the difference between me. And where do you? I mean, is it just you're just so focused on your goal that you just say you? I'm know, just like, hey, thinking I... of first place. I'm thinking of qualifying for that Olympia and getting my first place win. And what's what what is more important to me? Uh, a candy bar or you know that candy bar can be that different. Depends right? on what candy bar it is we're talking about here. Let's be honest. True. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's true too. That's true too. If I see but a milky, yeah, if I see know, a Milky Way out there, that I'm going to be like, okay, I might just, I might just get second place. Then it might be, I might. Just <laughs> you know what the hell with first place? I'm going to get first place. Bar and get no, second. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But you know, again. But the, yeah, no, I taste stuff and everything. It's not you know here and there. But you know what they say is when you cook, you you don't feel like eating your own food. It's actually true. You know. I don't know that that's that's the way like when you're cooking so much you're like okay you're tired of seeing it maybe you don't you know want to eat it as much I have never heard that before but I agree with it totally whenever I make myself like mac and cheese or french toast sometimes at the end I'm just like I don't even want this like what's the I put in all this effort for so yeah I I totally agree with you on that and again Jeannie I mean it's been so great having you on and talking oh it's been fun giving us an update and obviously I mean we wish you nothing but the best this will be released a couple of weeks before your show so I mean everyone you know go and check her out if you're in the Tampa area and if you want to go to her gym and get some personal training one-on-one go and check that out I'll leave a link to all that down below. And again, Jeannie, thank you again so much. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. And hopefully I'll get that win in Tampa. And you guys will see me on the Olympia stage. Absolutely. We can't wait. And again, this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing off. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.